Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our showing of Kramer vs. Kramer, the second selection in our current miniseries, Marvelous Merrill Movies, written and directed by Robert Benton, based on Avery Corman's 1977 novel of the same name, starring Meryl Streep in her first feature-length role, Dustin Hoffman and Justin Henry. Kramer vs. Kramer deals with many serious issues surrounding divorce, despite that on the fact that on the surface it appears to be a straightforward courtroom drama. It touches on the psychological effects on the children of divorce and on pertinent social issues such as gender roles, women's rights, paternal rights, and the work-life balance of single parents. The film was a major critical and commercial success when it was released. It earned a hefty $73 million on a budget of only $8 million. It was the highest grossing film in the U.S. and Canada in 1979 and received nine Oscar nominations, winning the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for Streep despite the fact that she appeared on screen for only about 15 to 20 minutes. The film was awarded Oscars for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, and Best Adapted Screenplay. Kramer vs. Kramer was filmed primarily in New York City, and there are many recognizable sites, including the Chrysler Building, Federal Hall, the Tweed Courthouse, Central Park, including Central Park Mall and the Naumburg Banshell, Lenox Hill Hospital, the Fred French Building with its lovely Art Deco doorway, located at 551 Fifth Avenue, the Copper Lantern and B.J. Mellon's Restaurants, and St. Thomas More Church. Vincent Canby of the New York Times called Kramer vs. Kramer a fine, witty, and moving, most intelligent adaptation of Avery Corman's best-selling novel, with Streep giving one of the major performances of the year and Hoffman splendid in one of the two or three best performances of his career. Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune gave the film four stars and wrote that it never loses its low-key realistic touch. You will sit at the edge of your seat wondering why we don't see more pictures like this. Despite the two principal actors rendering fine performances, it's been widely reported that Hoffman Harris Streep during filming and they did not get along well. Apparently, Hoffman tossed insults and obscenities at his co-star, taunting her with the name of her boyfriend, the recently deceased John Cazale, claiming that as a method actor, this was his way of drawing a better performance out of her. In his defense, Hoffman said he was actually living through the same events in his personal life that he was depicting on the screen and probably took out his rage and grief on Streep. The film's producer, Stanley Jaffe, and director Benton met with Hoffman in London, where he was filming Agatha to try to overcome his resistance to playing the role of Ted. Hoffman later credited Benton and Jaffe with rejuvenating his love for film acting, inspiring the emotional level he needed to support many of his scenes, reminding him of his own love for children and enabling him to be a better father by playing a father. When seven-year-old Justin Henry was engaged to play the role of Billy, Hoffman worked with him extensively to improvise and make his performance more natural. Hoffman and Streep would jokingly try to get Justin to pick one of them over the other. One day on the set, Hoffman asked Justin which of them he'd rather be with, and the little boy replied, her, she's nice. To which Hoffman replied, oh yeah, work with her five weeks and then see what you say. Streep was originally cast in the role of Phyllis, the Kramer family's neighbor, but forced her way into an audition for the role of Joanne Kramer before Hoffman, Benton, and Jaffe. When she was finally given the role, she insisted that it be rewritten to make her character more likable and less of a princess. Hoffman was particularly incensed that she wanted the dialogue in the restaurant scene redone. Shortly after the film's release, despite its popularity, the New York Times and Time Magazine published separate articles in which lawyers and judges criticized the courtroom scenes as legally out of date. According to these legal experts, a modern judge would have made use of psychological reports 
and considered the child's wishes. Another question was that the possibility of joint custody was not considered. Thus, Kramer versus Kramer failed to reflect the cultural changes occurring in the 1970s regarding attitudes about motherhood and fatherhood, even though it depicted Joanna's intense views about their son's care equally. Plot summary. After eight years of marriage, Ted Kramer, a workaholic up-and-coming young ad executive, finds himself behind the eight ball when his emotionally fragile young wife decides to leave him and their six-year-old son, Billy. This leaves Ted as a sole caregiver to the little boy, requiring that he develop long-delayed parenting skills. Ted discovers that being a single parent is a daunting task as he learns how to balance balance parental responsibilities with those of a full-time job outside their home. One day, out of the blue, after 18 months on the lam, Joanna returns and demands custody of her child to Ted's consternation, and an ugly court battle ensues. Fun facts about the film. The famous scene in which Billy defies his father insisted on skipping his dinner and gorging on Schraff's chocolate chocolate chip ice cream, was completely improvised by Hoffman and Henry. Schraff's, by the way, was a longtime New York institution where many, where many folks enjoyed luncheon or dessert and chocolates to boot. Hoffman contributed to many, many personal moments and dialogue to his performance. In the scene where he throws a wine glass at the wall, he prepared the cameraman so they could get the shot but never told Streep that he intended to, to do it, thus drawing a genuinely shocked outburst from her. She later said there were shards of glass in her hair from the broken wine glass. As recently as 2018, Streep told the New York Times that Hoffman had slapped her hard while filming a scene without warning her. She said, this was my first movie and my first take in my first movie, and he just slapped me and you see it in the movie. It was overstepping. We hear the first movement of Vivaldi's Mandolin Concerto in C under the opening credits. This contributed to the popularity of the piece and led to its being played more frequently. The set decorators originally planned to paint various Disney characters on the walls of Billy's room, but changed the images to clouds which Joanna had painted for her little boy. In one breakfast scene, Ted and Billy are munching on Entenmann's Donuts. Entenmann's bakeries were another long-time New York institution, but are now readily available in our local Harris Teeter supermarket. Benton used one very long tracking shot to film Hoffman running through the city streets, carrying his injured son to the emergency room. The courtroom stenographer was a real one. She actually told Hoffman that it was harder to work divorce cases than homicides. To prevent the censors from issuing an R rating for the film, for Joe Beth Williams' very brief nude scene, Benton had to darken the set. Streep actually wrote her own courtroom speech. When Justin Henry was nominated for the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor, he was only eight years old, the youngest actor ever to be so honored and that record still holds. Streep infamously left her Oscar on the back of a ladies' room toilet during the 1980s Oscar ceremonies. Ingeborg Sorensen, a former Miss Norway and Playboy Playmate, has a brief cameo as the woman Ted kisses at his office party. Meryl Streep was very pregnant by the time she shot the last scene of the film and had to hide her baby bump under a raincoat. The restaurant scene was filmed at J.G. Mellon's on East 74th Street and 3rd Avenue in Manhattan. Today, a frame still from the movie hangs above the table where the scene was shot. The Kramer's apartment was designed to fit right into its space in the building which was used for the film's exteriors. Billy's crying is real. Benton asked the little boy to think of a sad memory before each take. The cinematographer use the look and color of a Piero della Francesca painting to set the mood of the film. The last scene, when Joanna asked Ted how she looks, and Ted replies, terrific, 
was actually unscripted. It was a moment that really happened between Streep and Hoffman as they were preparing to shoot the scene. Benton observed it and added it into the movie. The book, which Ted reads to Billy after the scene in which he spots Joanna watching them, is a translation of Le Trésor de Rackham de Rouge, Red Rackham's Treasure, from Les Adventures de Tintin. Joe Beth Williams was deeply concerned that Justin Henry would be confused by her brief nude scene. But the little boy took only one look, yawned, and went right on with the scene. Things to look for. Ted and Billy enjoy Entenmann's donuts at one of their breakfasts. Look for the poster in Ted's study that says, Flatbush ain't flushing. Look for the product placement of Schraff's ice cream. Took for the tracking, look for the tracking shot of Billy and Ted racing through the streets to the ER. The real court stenographer. Streep's powerful courtroom speech. Miss Norway's cameo as the girl Ted kisses at the party. The restaurant scene at J.G. Mellon's, including the still phone photo from the film on the wall above the table. Joe Beth Williams' nude scene and the look and color of a Piero della Francesca painting used at the beginning of the film. Now it's time to view Kramer versus Kramer. Sit back, settle down. Please remember that it may take a few minutes for the film to roll. Enjoy. <laughs>